Hello friend, you are welcome to 2023 10 days of prayer. And our theme is, is very powerful. Back to the altar. Back to the altar. That's where we meet God. We are going to explore the concept of the altar. You know, the devotional life. Uh, somebody has said that holiness stands on two uh, two legs in, in order to be balanced. And one is ethics. You know, things you should do and things you shouldn't do. Okay, you need to know that. But the other one is actually devotion. In other words, something has to inform your ethics and fuel it. You have to have power. You have to be connected somewhere. You have to be connected in order to have the power to function spiritually. And that's the, 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 the idea of the altar. We must go back to the altar. Have you abandoned your altar? You know, from today, January 11 to January 21, 10 days, January 2023, we are going to be focusing on the idea of, of the altar. What does it mean today? You know, men of old, they raised altars. What does it mean today? Let us pray before we begin. Father, we give you glory. We worship you. There is none holy as you. There is none beside you. Neither is there any rock like you. Father, help us today and bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Back to the altar. Praying for a reconnected heart. Praying for a reconnected heart. Today, our topic, day one, is where are you? Where are you? Somebody asked that question about 6,000 years ago, was, was asking man. Perhaps that's the first question, you know, that man was asked. Where are you? Our key test comes from Genesis chapter 3, verse 9. We read, And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou where are thou god was was calling to adam is it that god did not know what has happened is it that god doesn't know the location where adam you know was of course he knew but he wanted adam to acknowledge you know what has happened and and that's all god you know needed to step in to save adam and of course, you know, Adam said, I am naked, you know, and so I, I have hid myself from you. I am naked. Adam doesn't want to meet God in the nakedness of his soul. In the, in the nakedness of his soul. God is calling you today. Are you blind, naked, like the uh, Laodicean church members, but you think you are okay? God is calling you today back to the altar, back to where you left off, you know, where you used to commune with God, where you used to pray with God. God says, come now, let us reason together. Do your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. You know, how did Satan get Adam and Eve into the, the mess of sin? How did he... Uh, disconnect them from God, from the altar, if you please. How did he do that? The Bible tells us, you know, that he lied to them. He lied to them about God. He lied to them about their state. He lied to them, yes, even about death. Because God had told them that if you eat from this fruit, you shall surely die. If you eat from this fruit, you will surely die. But the devil said, no, 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 you, you don't die, you know. And so let us read from Petrarch's and Prophets, page 54. There, Mrs. White said, Satan represented to the holy pair that they would be gainers by breaking the law of God. Do we not today have similar reasoning? Did you get that? They would be gainers. That's what the devil, you know, insinuated in his message that they would be gainers, that they would gain if they transgress the law of God. 
Now, let me tell you something. You never gain by sinning. You never gain. You can gain only when you refuse to sin. That's why, that's why the Apostle John would say, he said, look, uh, my little children, I write unto you that you sin not. He, he went on to say, but if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. But sin is, is it's really dangerous. I mean, it would be better if man did not sin. Uh, but man sinned. We know the story. And um, found himself in a mess. Let, let me read to you what the author of our write-up for, for these 10 days, what the author has written. Powerful stuff. The writer says, Adam and Eve made the mistake of listening to the devil and he convinced them that what God offered them was not enough. That communion with God in a close trusting relationship was not enough. Is the devil telling you the same thing? That it's not enough, you know? In other words, he was telling them, Satan was, you know, claiming that God was withholding something from them. Your eyes shall be open if you eat and you shall, you know, be uh, as God. You shall be as God. So there is something God is holding on from you, the devil was insinuating. You know, whatever God has given you is not enough. All you need to be happy is to break his law. You know, and then you will be free. He promised them freedom. He promised them elevation. He promised them happiness in transgression. But 6,000 years had proven that uh, there is no happiness in transgression. Of course, there, there, there is no, no joy. Some people may still be deceived, you know, thinking that the law of God is restrictive. The law of God doesn't give joy. But, but the law of God is called the law of liberty, the law of freedom. Okay? And uh, the Spirit of God is also called the Spirit of liberty. Where the Spirit of God is, uh, there is liberty. So if the Spirit of God lives in your heart, you know, and you are connected at the altar, you know, where you study his word and take his word to heart. Where you, you know, or believe his word and do his will. There at the altar, if you are connected with God, that's where joy is. That's where happiness is. In the presence of the Lord, there is joy evermore. I mean, there is, and that kind of peace and joy, the world cannot give. So the devil was telling them, God is uh, withholding something from you. God cannot be trusted. He, he was telling them. God cannot be trusted. Um, and that he's not enough. You know, today he's still whispering the same thing to young people. You know, especially in this tech age. Where, you know, with all our gadgets in this digital age. The devil is whispering uh, and, and promising things that that are not real. You know, he, he promised Adam and Eve, Eve especially, things that were not real. The devil may be promising you things that will not last, things that are not real. And I want to tell you that now is the time to reject Satan's lies, reject his lies and go back to the one who truly loved you, who loved us with an everlasting love. And, and, and go back to the one who is drawing you closer to himself with an everlasting love. What, what a God. Let me read to you from Patriarchs and Prophets, page 57, Ellen White. She said, The love and peace which had been theirs was gone. Let me pause to say, everything had changed, you know, with the introduction of sin. When sin intruded this world, everything became out of balance. And if you are wondering today, why are things the way they are? There are people who are saying, I can't believe in God because in nature we see evil. You know, in nature we see the venom of the, of the reptile. We see, you know, the, the, the predator prey thing. We see all of that evil in nature, even in the human heart. And so there is no God. If there is a God, he would have stopped all of, all of that. 
But if you look at you know what happened at the beginning and what changed everything, it wasn't God's fault. It was disobedience. It was man disconnecting himself from God uh, by disobedience, uh, which is sin. Okay, so there is no way somebody will be painting sin in, in a positive light. Everything changed. Let me let's read. Let's read what we were reading. The love and peace which had been theirs, that is Adam and Eve, was gone. And in its place, they felt a sense of sin, a dread of the future, a nakedness of the soul. The robe of light which had enshrouded them now disappeared. And to supply its place, they endeavored to fashion for themselves a, a covering. For they could not, while unclothed, meet the eye of God and holy angels. All right, everything changed. The weather itself was changed. You know, with time, the leaves started dying and falling. Uh, the, 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 there was this cold chill. I mean, this thing that had, you know, told them that everything had changed. They were naked. The robe of light that covered them was gone. And God is, is, is telling you today, if you are not with me, you are naked. God to the church of Laodicea, you are naked. You are blind. But the devil says, if you transgress, your eyes shall be open. But God says, you are blind. You know, the devil says, it's going to be okay. But now, you are naked. God is calling us and is telling us today that it is only in him, back to the altar, back to basics. It is only in him that we can find rest for our souls you know it's time to pray and i want to really set the stage i want to tell us what prayer really means what uh, prayer is such a powerful privilege that um, we do ourselves uh, a great disadvantage when we don't pray okay so, so, so let me read to you from uh, the book prayer by ellen white page seven she wrote it is a wonderful thing that we can pray effectually that unworthy erring mortals possess the power of offering their requests to God. What higher power can man desire than this to be linked with the infinite God? Feeble, sinful man has the privilege of speaking to his maker. We may utter words that reach the throne of the monarch of the universe. We may speak with Jesus as we walk by the way and he says I am at thy right hand powerful stuff what a privilege so for these 10 days you need to stay with us as we pray together we're going to pray the word of God every day we pray the word of God before we pray our own prayers and for our church and for our families for our nation before we pray, we pray the word of God there is power in the word of God. The will of God is in the word of God. And so we're praying with Jeremiah chapter 24 verse 7 today. And it says, I will give them a heart to know me that I am the Lord and they shall be my people and I will be their God for they shall return to me with their whole heart. Okay, so let's, let's pray with those words quickly. Uh, number one, we're going to pray that God will give us a heart to know Him. A heart to know Him. Let us pray. Father, we come to You today. We worship You. We praise You. And we pray that You give us a heart. The heart to know You. And we pray that You give us Your Holy Spirit. We pray that You will help us and You will bless us. And You will take all the glory. We open our hearts to You today. And we pray that You will take away from us that evil Heart that is desperately wicked. Oh, take it away from us, oh Lord. And perform an oppression in us, a spiritual oppression where the stony heart is removed and the heart of flesh, where your will by your Holy Spirit is written. Uh, give us a heart that knows uh, you. Give me a heart. Give, give the listener the heart to know you, oh Lord. Let it be so for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's continue to pray with our verse 
today. And uh, it says, they shall be my people. You know, we have wandered away from God. And God wants us to be his people. He wants us to come back to him. Come back to the altar. We have sinned. Each of us, we have gone away. But God says, they shall be my people. Don't you want to be part of God's people? Let's pray. Father, we give you glory. We are sorry that we have sinned. And because our sins have separated us from you, like Adam and Eve, we no longer enjoy the peace that should exist. We are lost. But, but today you are reaching out to us, asking us, where are you? You are the one that took the initiative of salvation. You are the one that came looking for us. And we are so grateful. And you want to make us your people, part of your people. So Lord, we pray today that indeed you will make us part of your people. And bless your church as a people in these 10 days. As we pray together for, the, for global reign, for the power of the Holy Spirit. Bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. We are continuing uh, with the word. We, we pray in the word. And God says, I will be their God. Uh, that's a prayer point. I will be their God. Uh, is he your God? Okay. Are you opening your heart to him so that he will be your God? If he's your God, things will be happening in your life that ordinarily speaking, they cannot happen. You will be more kind. You will be a different person to your wife, to your spouse, to your husband, to your to your siblings, to your neighbors. You will be a new person if you allow God to be your God, if he's your Lord and your Savior. Our Father, we come to you. We accept you as our God. We don't want to have any other God before you. And we know that this is the path to peace. Oftentimes, Lord, we are distracted. Even material things have become a God. Mammon, money. We pursue these things. Uh, at the expense of, of, of a relationship with you. Uh, Lord, we pray today that indeed you will be our God. And that uh, the, the opinions of others, our relations, our bosses, and money, and whatever the devil is trying to replace you with in our lives, will not work. You will take your rightful place in our hearts as number one, as first, and best, and last. You will be our all in all. So Lord, come and be our God. Come and take possession of our hearts. Indeed, help us not to make mockery of, of, of our relationship with you. Help us not to claim to be your children while we are sinning. Help us to come back in repentance for we have sinned, but we come to you today and we know that you are our God. Help us to be sincere. Help us to come to you in, in truth. Help us to uh, come to you. We, we pray today for your power, for your fire to begin to burn in our hearts, to burn away the dross of sin and, and to sacrifice every other thing that is trying to pull us away from you to the blood of the Lamb, to crucify the flesh, uh, to help us so that you can be our God forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, friends. Okay, we pray. It says, and they shall return to me. They shall return. When God was asking Adam, where are you? He only wanted Adam to acknowledge and to return. Okay? And he's asking you the same question today. And he's saying, will you return to me? Oh, Father, we come to you. We pray that the devil and sin and self and the material things of this world and the false promises and the fitful Pleasures, the, the, the pleasures of sin will not keep us back from you. Your word says that they, they shall return to me, Lord. Today, we return to you like the prodigal uh, son who wandered away, Lord. We see that your spirit is speaking to us today to return to you. Help us to return to you. Uh, we know that as we take this step to return back to you, uh, your arms are wide open and you, are, you want to receive us to yourself. Uh, be with us and bless us and receive us, O Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, and lastly, as we pray on this verse, on the word of God, the verse says that we shall return with our whole heart. You know, God will not take, you know, half-heartedness. He will not accept that kind of, of, of relationship 
where we don't give him all our hearts. Yet, that is the one thing that is difficult for man to give. But today, as we seek God, come seeking us. As we behold him, you know, on the cross, dying for us, giving his all. The devil had represented him as being selfish. But God says, no, I, I, can, I can lose everything for you. And that's what we see Jesus. We see that Jesus emptied himself of all his glory, of all his power, and came to this world. And risked everything to Calvary and defeated the devil, sin, all for us. He gave us his whole heart. We cannot give him anything less. In fact, what we're giving him is our sinful hearts to cleanse for us and to bless us. So Lord, we come to you today. We pray that you will take anything half-heartedness from us. Please, Lord, help us to be sincere in our relationship with you. Bless us today. And help us to to come to you, to return to you with our whole heart. Help us not to mock, try to mock you by not serving you with our whole heart. By not coming to you in in terms of of stewardship and everything. Stewardship of time, of means, of influence, of uh, whatever. We pray that you will take everything. um, uh, Take our whole heart. Uh, Let our lives be consecrated unto you. We know that you left your glory for for us. So be with us and bless us. Take all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, friends. So let us just praise God and and thank him. Uh, Let's give him thanks and praise. And so, Father, we give you glory. We thank you for our lives. We pray that praise from our hearts and our lives we are sent to you. Lord, you came looking for us like the shepherd coming to look for the sheep. You climbed all the mountains, you know, all the jagged paths, and, 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 and you, you saw us in the cold. You, sh- you saw the ship, and you, you took us into your warm arms, uh, carry, carrying us home. On Calvary, we see you, you know, bleeding from everything that you had to do to save us. Oh, Father, we pray, we thank you. We thank you for salvation. We praise you. And may your name be glorified for coming to look for us, to save us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, the next is to confess our sins. The Bible says if we say we have no sin, we, are, uh, we deceive ourselves and we, are, we try to make him a liar. We, couldn't, we can't say that. And so, Father, we come to you today and we confess our sins. Our sins of commission and omission. Uh, we, we confess our sins of lust, our sins of not putting you first, our sins, all kinds of sins, sometimes sins of pornography, masturbation, whatever our sins are today, Lord, we lay them at the foot of the cross and, and we pray that you will blot out our sins, even in the Holy of Holies, as you stand before the Father, we know we, you have gone there to actually atone for us and to blot out our sins. So blot out our sins from the record books and give us justification as we believe you today and repent of our sins in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to uh, pray for God's guidance uh, and pray that he will guide us and bless us every day. And Father, we thank you and we worship you. We pray that you will lead us in our lives. Help us, Lord. We, we don't know where to go. We don't know what to do. We don't know what to choose. We don't know which career. We don't know which partner to choose in life as a husband or a wife. We don't know, Lord, uh, what to do. But we pray for your guidance. I, I pray for the listener right now. The listener may be at a crossroads where he or she really needs you. Uh, uh, Father, I pray that you will be there to show the way. Guide our lives and make sense of our life. Do not let us go where you do not want us to go. Guide us with your word. Guide us with your spirit. Guide us with godly counsel. Help us not to listen to the counsel of the ungodly. Guide us aright. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from all evil and take all the glory. Thank you, Father, for doing that in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's pray for our church. Uh, The Bible says, uh, Jesus was speaking. He says, I have planted my church. I have, I have founded the church upon myself, the rock, and the gates of hell will not prevail. 
I mean, the church may appear as if it's about to fall, Ellen White says. You know, have you noticed, you know, of recent, have you experienced anything disheartening in the church? People you trust should know better, but they are not doing, you, you see a lot of hypocrisy and, and all of that, and you are discouraged. Don't be discouraged. The church may appear as if it's about to fall, but it doesn't fall. Uh, but let's pray that God will will take charge in our church. Father, we give you glory. We pray for our church. We pray that you help us. We pray that you bless us today and help us to be what you want us to be. Take all the glory, take all the honor. We pray that you will give the church good leaders. You promise in Jer Jeremiah chapter, chapter 3 verse 15 that you will send us pastors who have understanding and who will feed us with knowledge. Oh, please send us such pastors. Raise elders in the churches and deacons who know the word, who can feed the church aright so that grievous bulls will not be speaking perverse things to take people away and so that people who are drunk with power will not find their way to leadership and be destroying things and discouraging people we pray for the church today that your name be glorified in jesus name amen so let us pray for our local requests okay and let us pray for our current needs in our church family neighbors so you can pray along. You can call people's names that you know in your corner there. You pray. Let's, let's pray that God will bless us. Father, we give you glory. We worship you. We praise you today. We, we pray that you help us and bless us. There is none holy as you. There is none beside you. I pray for our families. I pray that you will bless our families. I pray that you will unite our families. Uh, I pray that because the devil hates families, families being the unit of society, he knows that if the family goes wrong, the society is gone. The church will be affected. So he's attacking families. Lord, keep our families strong. Have that there will be love, your own love, in our families. Uh, we, 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 I pray especially for the listener now. I pray that whatever breakthrough the listener is looking for, I pray that you will help and you will bless. May your name be glorified in our lives. Thank you and help us and, and bless us today. Is it breakthrough? Lord, in finding a spouse, is it breakthrough, some financial breakthrough? Is it academic breakthrough? Is it an idea that your son needs to complete that project? And whatever the project is, I pray that you supply. I pray that you provide and bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we are going to go to the world church prayer lists. Okay? Every day here, we are going to be sharing. We are going to be uh, praying uh, for, uh, with the prayer list provided by the World Church. Okay, so um, let us pray. Lord, please let a mighty revival of primitive godliness sweep over your church, O oh Lord. Let it sweep over your church in these final days. Lord, we pray that your name be glorified. May we stand for the truth though the heavens fall. Oh Lord, help us indeed to stand for the truth. Many of our people, our members, do not know what it means to stand for the truth, though the heavens fall. So in our little corner, let us always love the truth and stand for the truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us pray now for religious liberty. We pray, O oh Father, we pray for religious liberty and freedom of conscience to worship you throughout the world. Many people have been prevented from getting access to the gospel and to have the courage to, to say they love Jesus. They, they love him in their heart. They want to change. Well, there are certain places in this world, in Nigeria and other places, they, they cannot. If they, if they attempt to do that, they will lose their lives. I pray that re the idea of religious liberty will prevail and governments will begin to defend people, defend this God-given right to worship according to the dictates of their conscience so that your word will go forward and fill the whole earth in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, let's continue to pray for our world church prayer list. Lord, may the world church accept the call to widely proclaim the free and just messages to every nation and tongue. Show us how to center all of our teachings on the love and righteousness of Jesus. Teach us how to be Christocentric in 
our approach, in our teaching, so that Jesus and Jesus alone will be seen and be lifted in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, let's continue with the World Church Prayer List. Lord, may Adventists around the world declare, I will go. Uh, may it not just be a slogan, Lord. It, it has been a slogan for many. They sing it, they say it, they chant it, I will go, but they, we don't go anywhere. Because everything <laughs> appears to be a slogan these days. But Lord, we pray that it will not be so, oh Lord. Help us to say, I will go and take the call to take up the call to serve you and proclaim the, the the three angels message the good news of salvation in jesus name amen uh, let us continue um, this time we are praying for wisdom to understand and share the word of god oh father we pray for wisdom to search and understand and follow god's holy bible teach us to rightly divide the words of truth and prayerfully share them with others in jesus name amen and finally finally here let us pray lord we we come to you please renew our appreciation for the heavenly instruction found in the inspired writings of ellen white let it be so for us thank you for your goodness and mercies take all the glory in jesus name Amen. Amen. It's going to be more refreshing every day. So join us every day for these 10 days from today, January 11 to January 21. Uh, we are going to continue to pray and go back to the altar where we find God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.